Listening to new values in the new observation framework, similar to how you would do it with published variables, is currently not possible. While you can track changes, you cannot monitor new values as they are received over time. In this video, I will delve deep into explaining this issue and present an elegant solution. So let's dive in. And if you want to learn Swift UI in four weeks from beginner to advanced, go ahead and check out the link in the description. More on this later. Okay, so today we are going to talk about on receive and why it's not really good enough that we have what we have in Swift UI. Now, this is kind of a continuation of my previous video on on change of. Uh, go ahead and check out again, uh, the link will be in the description or in the cars right over here. Now, uh, we have created basically. Um, continuous observation demo app, where we are basically just listening to changes. And uh, I had the case that uh, if you have uh, this is changed on an observable, we are just listening to basically changes. If the value is true and you are giving it a true value again, or basically the same value, uh, this uh, on the change will not be triggered. Make sure that you check it out, I am, uh, that video. Uh, what we wanted is the published variable because the on receive was there. And then we just created this on change of or on change of optional. And what I did is just uh, imported the Swift UI continuous observation framework, uh, which can be found right over here. And uh, yeah, that's what we did. Now, there are a couple of things that I got as a feedback on this video. First of all, uh, you wanted me to uh, elaborate on the code, how all of this works. And this is what we are going to do today. And we are going to basically change a little bit the API because on change of optional and on change of is a little bit misleading. Uh, as I walked through uh, the uh, code again, I said to myself, on receive of is basically a better name of doing this because we are going to receive continuously the values, not just looking for changes. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, working currently with uh, the SwiftUI continuous observation framework 1.2.0 uh, and uh, I am going to uh, build out the next version. Basically, we are going to upgrade to the next version. Uh, let me just check which is the latest one. Yeah, you can just download it. Yeah, 1.3.1. This is what I'm going to show you how you can build out today. Attending SwiftUI Camp offers a unique chance to master SwiftUI in just four weeks, providing a thorough and intensive learning experience. With an extremely crafted curriculum and personalized guidance, you will acquire practical skills and deep knowledge essential for modern iOS app development. Whether you're a beginner or looking to hone your skills, SwiftUI Camp is the ideal gateway to becoming proficient in SwiftUI and advancing your app development career. Okay, so uh, what we are going to do is just, first of all, uh, I want to remove the uh, observation, continuous observation library. So uh, we are not going to have any, uh, you know, conflicts in the code. And then uh, I will just simply comment this part out and I believe everything else uh, should stay the same. Yes, so uh, now let's just create a new file and uh, uh, it will be a Swift file, and uh, I will name this, I know, it is a mouthful, but yeah, basically uh, that's what it is, continuous observation model file. Let's create that. And um, yeah, let's create our view modifier. So we need to import Swift UI right over here, and let's just start uh, having a view modifier. Uh, we're going to use the you know the default ones right over here. I'm going to remove the preview, and now let's make some uh, a little bit more uh, space right over here. So basically, we are not going to modify the contents itself. We are going to basically put an observation on this view also. So uh, how to um, do that. Well, first of all, we want to create a uh, with observation tracking listener. So, uh, yeah, this is something new in uh, iOS 17. Uh, yeah, let's just uh, type this out and you will see how all of this works. So, function, and we're going to have a value. 
And um, this will be a, basically a completion. So we are going to have an es at escaping. Uh, it will be an auto closure again at auto auto closure. And we are going to return something. Now, this something, because it has to be kind of generic, we need to uh, set it up right over here. Okay, so we have that set up. And uh, because I want this to be available also for optionals, I'm going to have the default uh, set up to be with optional. Now, uh, we are also going to have to perform something when this value changes. Okay, so uh, we are going to perform and then at escaping. And then we are going to have this T, again, that's optional. And it will be an asynchronous async. And I'm going to go avoid a right over here and those two parentheses finally. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of a, kind of a long uh, ended function, but that's what it is. We are going to listen to the changes of a value and then perform something on top of that. Okay, so right over here, we are going to use the new with observation tracking. Uh, it will return something, so uh, but we don't really care about that. So let underscore equals with um, observation tracking. Uh, this with continuous observation, this is what we have created, so uh, don't mind that. There is only this one with observation tracking, and there is an apply and an on change. So let's hit a return uh, again right over here. Uh, what do we want to apply when we are uh, going to have the change? Well, we are going to have a task because, as I uh, told you before, we also want to have this as an asynchronous one. We want to go on the main thread, so at main actor in, and then we await and then just go perform. And uh, we are going to pass along the value. So value and two parentheses because it's an auto closure. So next, let's move on to the on change. Basically, this is where the magic happens because, okay, uh, when something uh, was triggered, uh, we just perform that value. But here we are going to do not just whenever the value changes, we are going to be triggering the with continuous observation again whenever a new value is added. So right over here, we are going to do another task. Again, at main actor in, because we want it to be on the main thread. And we are going to do with continuous observation of value. And then we are going to add the perform for the perform. So basically it's kind of a, a, a self loop, but uh, you know, it's, it's just going to go again for the uh, perform right over here. And basically that's it. This is uh, what we have uh, set up with the continuous observation. Of course, we do need to have a custom initializer. So, you know, um, we uh, may have access to uh, this with continuous observations value and perform. So let's create this initializer in it, in it, and then underscore value of type optional T. And as you can see everywhere is it's optional. And then we are going to perform, perform at escaping. Let's have that completion uh, async. Async. And uh, well, yeah, I'm, I prefer the two parentheses. It could be void, whatever. It, it doesn't really uh, make any difference. And then we are going to have with continuous observation of value. We're just going to pass it along and uh, perform. Okay, so now that we have our custom initializer, uh, yeah, we don't want to add this as mod dot modifier and then continuous observation modifier. We want to create a, an extension. So let's create an extension on the view right over here. And um, let's just start off uh, with the simplest one, you know, with the optional values, because uh, that's what we have created. We are going to create another one for non-optional values too, but uh, that would be our second one. So func, I'm going to call this on receive of, 
and uh, we want to make sure that we uh, pass along the uh, generic so a t is added in there of type and that would be of uh, value t optional uh, we are going to perform perform there we go we are going to perform an add escaping and again the t optional and async we are going to uh, return some view okay so basically we are just passing along the values in the perform this uh, looks really familiar to the on change of make sure if you want to check that out uh, right click on on change of and see uh, the how it's basically set up so we have this value and we are going to perform something when that value is being is going to be received okay and then self dot modifier and then continuous continuous observation modifier and we're just going to pass along the value value and then perform there we go okay so now we will be able to use this so let's go back to the content view and uh, this is changed is an optional one so we can just use it right now so on on a receive of now we can see that we have this available view model dot is changed and then we are going to perform something we are going to get back a new value and then let's just print out the new value let's build and run and see how all of this looks like and as you can see it knows that this is an optional so if i tap on true so initially the value is nil because we did not set up any initial value. Then we have this true once I tap it, then we have false, again true, false. But the cool part here is that whenever I tap on false again, it's just going to be triggered again. True, 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 it's just going to be triggered. Nothing like this will happen if you use the on change of, um, or if you use the published variables, but again, that's an observable object. On the observe with the observable macro, you don't have anything like on receive, but now you have it. But this is an optional. Sometimes you want to have this as uh, with a default value, so a non-optional. Uh, now, you know, it just says uh, we don't really. Uh, even if this one is a non-optional, we are still going to get back here for the new value, an optional one. So let's just go back and create another function. I'm just going to copy out this one and paste it in. So uh, we are not going to waste time with that. I'm going to remove the optional parts. Now it's just going to uh, not uh, be really happy with the perform because we need the optional uh, general over there. So what we are going to do is, uh, let me just type this out uh, once more, so modifier, and then value, uh, that is the value. And under perform, I'm not going to add the perform, I'm just going to hit return over here, and I'm just going to have a value, this one is optional. So I'm going to unwrap it, so guard, let value, else, I'm just going to simply return return there we go and then we are going to await uh, because it's asynchronous perform uh, with the value this time a non-optional value this is when we are getting back that value so now uh, if we just go over here this uh, should go away yes because now it recognizes that we added a non-optional uh, for the value and then this new value will be a non-optional let's build and run and see how all of this looks like again so default value St starting value is true yes it is and then if i tap on false then it will be false and then true again and then if i tap true true many times it will register and then force 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 it will uh, register so that's kind of the update on the previous video uh, hope you enjoyed it if you do like my teaching style go ahead and check out uh, Swift UI camp, uh, master Swift UI in four weeks. We are going to learn about Swift UI basics, layout and data handling, navigation, Swift data, and whatever your questions are about Swift UI. A 50% link is down in the description.